What's up, guys? I hope everyone had a blessed Monday. But let's get into this video real quick. As you see, I do have a bearded dragon on my shoulder. I also behind me have a leopard gecko who is super active and does not want to be held right now. As well as... Boom. Slowpoke, the sulcata. Because all these animals have something in common. He was just soaking, so you guys see little bits of drips of water. Um, so, all these guys have one thing in common. That is... And it's not solely these three species. Um, it could be any reptile, realistically speaking. Impactation. It's a huge issue, especially with new keepers to the hobby, because they don't really understand their animals. Now, bearded dragons, a lot of people think, oh, okay. <coughs> <coughs> sorry, guys. A lot of people think, oh, they're desert animals. They need to be put on sand. That's not the case. That's not the case with anything, personally speaking. My per uh, personal uh, recommendation is to never use sand for anything, maybe uh, aquariums, but even some fish sand is bad for. So be careful with that completely. It may have a picture of a bearded dragon, a leopard gecko, a tortoise. Could be anything in the world, even snakes. <clears throat> Ooh, excuse me. But just because it's marketed for said, or for said animal does not make it good for said animal. Um, it's just the company's way, for instance, uh, I can't even tell you the name of the company, but it's Reptisand or Calcium Sand, anything. It's bad. Calcium Sand, especially, especially, as much as you may think, oh, that's good sand. No, it's bad. Don't trust it. Don't do it. Stand clear from it. If you must use a loose substrate, and I can't even, I won't recommend it for bearded dragons. I recommend either paper towel, newspaper, uh, whether it's printed on or not, does not make a difference. Uh, Repta carpet, like what I use, could use a list of thing, uh, things, sorry. Even uh, notebook paper, don't matter. That's what I would use for bearded dragons. Leopard geckos, if you must have them in a loose substrate, come on. There is uh, different types of ground coconut husk. Okay, so for instance, uh, Eco Earth, that stuff's good. Uh, plantation soil, that stuff's good. Same stuff, different brand. Um, that's what I use plantation soil. Get uh, good bricks for like five bucks, less than five bucks. You can do three packs for like 10, puck, 10 bucks. God, I can't even talk. However, that's only good to a certain extent. Some, sorry, some animals should not be on that regardless. Make sure you know what you're getting into before you get into it. Make sure you know what signs you're looking for. For instance, with sand, if you notice that your animal is not making any bowel movements, that's an issue. If you notice your animal is starting to be sluggish, not drinking, not eating, these are issues that you need to take your animal to the vet, realistically. Um, what I recommend is doing at least uh, soakings, warm soakings once a week, whether it's for a bearded dragon, leopard gecko, tortoise, even the snakes. Because typically when you put a reptile in warm water, it speeds up the process, so to speak. They'll make movements in the water. End of story. Uh, now, obviously, if they just made a movement before you soaked them, obviously, they're not going to do it again. There are some cases like this girl here, my newest bearded dragon, by the way, guys. And she's just pretty. Hypo trans, high red, possible G-stripe. Um, regardless, she just pooped. And then I soaked her. And she pooped again because, see, she's going through a shed. And that's really what the soaks uh, help for. That's why she's this color right there, guys. But that's generally what the soaks are good for is for shedding, but they're also good to help pass movements. 
the biggest reason why sand is bad is because you know bearded dragons leopard geckos if you guys are getting or if you guys are new to the hobby you might not know they like to lick their environment when you have sand they're going to lick the sand it's going to get on their tongue it's going to stick on their tongue they're going to swallow it so many uh granules of sand will start to block up their passages passages can't talk guys i apologize um and that's gonna be what impacts them they might not even be able to move after so long um if it goes unnoticed things you want to uh make sure you don't do you know is just keep them off sand completely sand boas i don't use uh sand for there i just won't use sand for anything realistically it, it's it's more of a health risk than anything. I don't care how good it may look, how this, how that, nothing. Don't use sand. Your insects are not going to stay in the bowls. They're just not. They're going to get out. They're going to get in the sand. Your animal's going to scarf up sand as it's trying to eat. It's not good. Just stay away from it. However, that's pretty much the end of that. Um, but I'm offering a giveaway of one of my t-shirts okay um i need 500 subscribers before i do that giveaway before i announce the winner for that giveaway at 500 subscribers the video is going to be a giveaway video announcing the winner but i'll make sure i put down in the description the rules <coughs> sorry guys the rules that uh would coincide with the giveaway so make sure you guys read the description. Make sure you guys comment below what you'd like to see more of. If I haven't already talked about it, I will make sure I do something to at least get points across. Um, yeah, so that's going to be the end of that. So make sure you guys watch this video. That's going to be my last upload right there. This video YouTube thinks is best for you. Make sure you hit that middle button right there. That's going to subscribe you to my channel if you haven't already. All right, guys, take care.